Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein. This is part seven of Newton's Principia Explained. Uh, Newton is trying to prove a theorem about ellipses where uh, Q and P are random points on the ellipse. And um, he's going to relate, uh, he's going to create a proportion in that he has a constant called L. L can be thought of as uh, this distance, the distance uh, through the focus that's sort of perpendicular to the major axis. It's called the lattice rectum, and that's the uh, it's 4.6 centimeters in this picture. Um, that also happens to be equal to uh, a relationship between the half of the major axis and half of the minor axis. 2BC squared over CA also equals that. So that's just what he's going to call L. And he's going to, uh, to prove this theorem. That L times QR over QT squared always equals 2CP over GV times QV squared over QX squared. Once he proves that this is generally true no matter where P and Q are, he then says that when Q gets really close to P, uh, these things all become ones. And we can rewrite this as uh, QR over QT squared is, is equal to 1 over L. Well, he also proves that force is equal to QR over QT squared times PS squared. But since QR over QT squared is equal to 1 over L, this becomes 1 over L times PS squared. But since L is a constant, it, it, the force is going to be proportional to 1 over PS squared, which is the famous inverse square law. At this point in, uh, in, the, in the lecture series, in the last part of this uh, lecture series, we've proved this equation 1, LQR over LPV equals AC over PC. Notice that this LQR is also part of what he's actually trying to prove. Well, he has four more equations to prove, and I'm going to get through, these, these ones are a lot shorter, so I should be able to get through couple of them in this 10 minute uh, interval. Uh, the second one is very easy and doesn't require even looking at the picture. It's just to say that uh, L times PV over GV times PV just by canceling out the PVs equals L over GV. Uh, this is going to be important because you see this L over PV on the bottom here. It's uh, the top of this one also that's going to be important. The third equation, there's only going to be five of them, so now we have two of them. Uh, in this one we're going to have to resort to a theorem about uh, ellipses which is not widely known today and I'm going to show you what that is. Here is a theorem from Apollonius that I bet you didn't know. Uh, if you take a, a point on a, an ellipse I'll call P. And uh, you make the line tangent to the ellipse at P, and then through P you make a line through the center of the ellipse, so that's PG. And then you pick a point on this line PG, which I'll call V, and you make a line that's parallel to the tangent, and you look at the places where it intersects the um, where it intersects the uh, the ellipse. Um, PV, this piece times uh, times VG will equal, uh, sorry, over QV squared will be a constant. Now this is a lot like in a circle where PV times VG would equal QV over VQ, uh, times VQ, sorry, but it's not, not that they're equal, it's that they have a, uh, if you divide PV times VG divided by QV uh, squared, QV happens to equal VQ prime, you'll get a constant, which is not 1. It would be 1 if this thing was a circle. And as I move this, you can see that does not change. So if I have a... So now if I throw in a second chord like that, but this one's actually going through the center. For that one, we could say that uh, PC times CG, but, but CG is the same thing as PC, so PC squared over uh, DC times CA 
which which is also d c squared because th those those are equal, would be that same constant. So that's a sort of not very well known thing. A lot of people know that one about if it's a circle that they have to be equal to each other. This says if it's an ellipse, it's not that they're equal; it's that they they have uh, their ratio is going to be the same no matter where that point is. So I'll put this together into uh, the the third equation. So in this picture we can say that GV using point V here as that as that point uh, GV times VP so the product of those two pieces uh, will equal sorry over QV squared will be that constant um, but PC if C is the point then we can say PC times CG which is the same thing as PC squared over DC times CK, which is the same thing as DC squared. And that's our third one. It comes directly out of Apollonius. It's kind of like a generalization of the famous theorem about circles that the product of the pieces of the chords are always equal. And the fourth equation, remember there are only five, by the way, just something to kind of notice is that this GV P times PV is, happens to be the top of this. It's going to become important. The fourth equation Uh, fourth equation is the easiest one of all. It's just the identity that QV squared over QX squared is equal to QV squared over QX squared. It doesn't seem like a very important thing worthy of these five uh, equations, but notice that this QV squared is the top of this portion and it's the bottom of this one. Well, he's got only one more, and this one's uh, the second most difficult to prove after number one. In order to do it, we're going to need to resort to uh, a theorem about ellipses that's not widely known. So let me show you that first. And this pretty unusual theorem says that if you put a, a rectangle sort of a, around an ellipse like this, it's got a certain area. If you uh, make another sort of parallelogram, but in the way this parallelogram works is that we have this point P and IJ is, uh, is, is parallel, uh, is, is tangent to the ellipse at point P. And uh, this other point is just what happens if you go through the, through the center. And then this other line has to be also, uh, has to be parallel to that tangent and where it intersects the ellipse you have these other two points. It turns out this is proved in Apollonius Conics, but we're just going to take it as an uh, assumption that it's been proved. Look over here at this HIJK area. Even when I move this point P around, that area does not change. And that's going to be relevant. We're going to use that in there because that's going to lead to some things like uh, we could say that the base times the height of the rectangle, of this rectangle, will be equal to the base times the height of this rectangle or the base times the height of this rectangle. So that's going to get used in uh, this fifth equation. And once we have the fifth equation, we're practically, uh, it's, it'll be almost done. So I, I think that I'll get this done in the next tutorial. But there's only a minute and 15 seconds left, so I'm going to save it um, for, for the next part, which is part, uh, part eight. Well, to be continued in part 8.